Everyone hear me all right, can they? I can hear you, yeah. Yep. Sweet. You're recording this, are you, Donnie, or not? Oh, yeah, sweet. Yeah, man, I am. Legend. Um, are we still waiting on more, or are we good to go? Um, oh, look, you'll normally get a few latecomers, but um, yeah. Sweet. It's up to you, man. Seven o'clock. All good. All right, well, thanks, everyone, for getting online tonight and um, joining up with the call. So... Uh, my name's Dave, as you probably know already. Um, I'm the owner of the Crypto Den. Um, and the reason we put this together tonight is basically um, the last few days, you probably noticed I've started sharing heaps of charts and you know trading advice and all that kind of stuff. And my personal inbox has been getting absolutely smashed with everyone saying, how do you know this is going to happen? How, how does this work? Can you tell me how this works? And so on and so forth. So I reached out to a good friend of mine, Donnie, um, and Donnie's a professional trader. We've, we've known each other a few years now, sort of passing through Facebook groups for, for crypto and all that. And I'm sure if you've been in any crypto groups around Australia, you, you've probably seen Donnie around quite a bit anyway. It's a bit of a crypto, uh, crypto group whore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Donnie's, he's a really successful trader. So, you know, he's, He's sold his business and, and he's now trading full time and he really knows what he's doing. So I had a chat with Donnie and I said, hey, look, let's put something together for these guys. Let's teach them some basics. Um, and yeah, he's agreed to to come on and and show you guys a few things. So hopefully we can all start learning something from Donnie and make some good decisions. And yeah, all yours, Donnie. So easy. Thanks, Dave. Um, yeah, so guys, I've seen some familiar faces on here already, but um, for you guys who don't know me, my name's Donnie. Um, I used to be a mechanic. I was a mechanical engineer. I used to run my own business building race cars in, in Melbourne. Um, did that for about 12 years. Uh, and I, I got into trading about three years ago. A friend of mine was doing it. And, and to be honest, I was giving him heaps of shit at the time. I, I thought what he was doing was a scam. So I used to pay him out something chronic. Um, but it, was, it, it sparked my interest at one stage when he, he started flashing his cash around a little bit. I'm like, shit, you're actually making money from this thing? What is it? I need to know about this stuff. So I, I dived into it myself, started doing a little bit of research. I'm a pretty over analytical person. So I like to like really research things and know what I'm getting into. Um, I got stuck right into it during 2017, really. Like I, I played the share market um, as, a, as, a, as a kid with my parents, just, uh, you know, just sort of dabbling a little bit, but never really took it seriously never really knew what I was doing. Um, but I, I really got into crypto through 2017 and I did really well to begin with and, and made a lot of money right at the start. But like a lot of people, probably a lot of people on this call here, I watched most of my money disappear again um, due to just not knowing how to, how to trade the market. It was one of those times it was you know, referred to as a bit of a bubble where you could just throw shit at the wall and it would probably stick. And it was quite easy to make money. But um, I quickly realized that I didn't know what I was doing. And I was just incredibly lucky, like a lot of people. Saw a lot of my um, profits disappear. Um, but that really gave me a taste of what is possible. So I sort of gone, okay, it, it was quite easy to make money. It's, it's harder to hold on to it. And, and I need to know exactly what I'm doing so I can actually hold on to this stuff. So I set out, I, I researched you know, all the different, um, all the different groups around in Australia. I did a lot of uh, research on different courses and stuff like that. I ended up doing a course back in 2017, <coughs> um, which just taught me the basics of technical analysis to begin with. Uh, that really intrigued me, the technical side of things. And I, I took a lot from that course, not just what I learned, but I, I realized there's a lot more to learn. So I went out on myself. I got mentored by a guy in the UK, a Forex trader, and um, funnily enough, we, a mate of mine met up with um, an Uber driver one day and um, we, they were just talking about stocks and trading and stuff like that. And it turns out this Uber driver was a Forex trader and we got chatting back and forward. We were trying to set a few things up and we ended up doing a few live calls with him. And um, turns out this dude was an absolute gun and he taught us some pretty cool stuff to begin with. I'd never really traded on the Forex market and that before. So he taught us some cool stuff and we were sitting down trading with him one day and he's um, shared his screen and, and the dude had like four and a half million dollars in his bank account. We're like, what the fuck is this guy doing driving an Uber around? But 
yeah, that it showed us like, yeah, the lifestyle that these guys lived. Once you get the hang of things and learn how to manage your money and get good at trading, you know, the, the possibilities are pretty crazy. He, he drove an Uber around because he was bored um, and he just likes to meet people and, and have a chat and drive around. And that was like his thing he did. It was kind of a good job for him because he could sit on his couch and, and trade and do what he wants. And if he was bored, he could turn his app on and say, yeah, I'm available. Go pick someone up and take him around. And, you know, I was like, oh, that's, that's a pretty cool lifestyle just to be able to do whatever you want, whenever you want. Really opened my eyes to like the limitations or I should say there's no limitations to trading. Uh, I've always worked long hours. You know, I used to work 70, 80 hours a week. Um, you know, pretty demanding with some of the race teams and stuff that I'd work with and some of the, the drivers and stuff that I used to have to build engines for. Um, you know, quite often you'd be at the shop till two o'clock in the morning getting an engine ready because someone was racing on the weekend and I wouldn't see my family and you, know, you didn't really get rewarded from it anyway because the, the money we made was, you know, I'd, I'd still live week to week paying bills. Not something I wanted to do for the rest of my life, really. Thought I did at the time, but um, I realized that it's just, it's never going to happen. So trading was kind of my way out. Got stuck into it. Took a good couple of years to get good at it. Um, and then started making my moves to sort of transition out of that. And, you know, as of four months ago, I um, literally handed back the keys to my shop. I uh, closed the doors, sold everything I had. And uh, I now trade full time. So yeah, so that's kind of my story. <laughs> what What would you say to someone now, to some of the people in this group that, you know, what advice would you give them if they wanted to start taking this industry a little more serious? Because you've, you've taken that leap of faith, right? You went, all right, I'm actually pretty good at this. I've got a mechanic business that I'm not really getting much out of apart from losing all my time and money in that in that same respect so yeah someone that does want to start taking this a little more serious and go well i can make some money out of this what would what advice would you give them okay um i think a, a lot of people come into this with the wrong mindset and i'll admit i was like that at the start just you know i i mentor about a thousand people in my community and it's almost the same for every single one of them normally the first question that they ask me is like okay how, I've got 10 grand to play with. How, how, how quickly can I turn that into 20? And it's just like, times I've heard that. yeah, it, I, I thought that way. And that's, that's the attraction to most people is like turning your money, you know, multiplying your money. I get it. That's, that's why we're here. But what I learned and I guess what I've developed and, and learned over time that it is a lengthy process. It does take time. No one comes in here and makes 20 grand the first week. And if they do, you probably won't see them next week because they'll probably lose that 20 grand because whatever they were doing was so risky. They got extremely lucky, but yeah. their luck will run out and whatever they're doing will just destroy them. Um, you know, I learned from some of my mentors. They, they taught me a lot about psychology, um, mindset. I've done some amazing personal development with my mentors um, that really turned my life around. And I think the psychology aspect of, of trading and understanding that it's a process that takes time you're not going to come in here and get good in two months and be making $2,000 a week. It's not going to happen. Very unlikely to happen. Um, but you know, if you stick to the rules, very got to be very disciplined, um, understand that it takes time. You're going to have wins. You're going to have losses. You're going to have good months. You're going to have shit months. It's going to really knock you around. But if you just keep doing it and doing it and doing it and don't give up and just keep improving, you're always improving, you're always analyzing your previous data and seeing what you did wrong, seeing if you can do it better. Eventually, things start to just make sense. And instead of you know taking one step forward, one step back, you start taking two steps forward, one step back. And then you start taking three steps forward, one step back. And then, you know, like I said, the sky's the limit because you know, once you get really good at this thing and you start compounding your account, there's no more $60,000 a year job. There's no more $100,000 a year job. You know, I've got the ability now to make an endless amount of money. It might take me a lot, you know, it might take me a while, but there's, there's no one saying that oh, as a trader, you'll make $200,000 a year. Like there's, there's no cap on this. So it just takes time. But I reckon if I never took that leap of faith to begin with and had the open mind to know that this is possible, yeah. then I wouldn't be here. So a lot of people are always in a rush um, to, to turn their money into something big and, and you know, you say, oh, you know, oh, six months before I start making money or 12 months before I get good. Don't, like, it sounds like a long time, but if you never start, then you, you're never going to get there. 
Mm. You know what I mean? Like I, I started, it took me, like I said, about two years before I would say I was probably a professional trader, but two years down the track, I'm here now, or, you know, it's been nearly three years since I first started. So three years down the track, I'm here now. And I'm so grateful that I actually just got started in the first place. Cause if I had to sat there throwing objections at, at, at everything saying, Oh, it's going to take too long. Oh, I don't have enough money or, you know, all that sort of shit, then I would never have gotten here. So I, I would say that the, the best advice, not the best advice, but some advice that I'd give you is understand that it takes time, but if you never start, you'll never get here. Hmm, I agree. And guys, if you, again, if you don't know who Donnie is, look him up, have a bit of a look through the groups. This guy's a, a superstar. I'm not kidding. I've watched him over the last three years from learning to trade to teaching people to trade. And like, he's, he's just a genius. So definitely keep your eye out for him. So in saying everything you've just said then, what do you reckon is the most important aspect? Like what's, I get it all the time as well in my groups and in my communities. They're always saying, um, you know, how do all the lines on your charts tell you what to buy and when to buy and all that. But I, my opinion is psychology is, that's one of the most important things, but what's, yep. what's your, what would you say? Yeah, probably one of the, one of the things I, I learned early on, like in the, in the course that I did, it was, it was one of the, one of the lessons, one of the module was pretty much just based on psychology and risk management and understanding that, you know, there's some stats that float around that everyone sort of quotes. So I'll quote it as well, which is normally um, trading is about 20% technical or skill and about 80% psychology. But it, it is true. Um, once you master your mind, which is why, you know, we focus so much on psychology and mindset, personal development and stuff, because if you're not right with yourself, your trading will reflect that um, to the point where if I'm not mentally right at the time, I, I'll, generally not trade or if I do trade, I'll, I'll generally drop my risk right down. So I'm not playing with as much money because mm. I've seen it reflect on my P and L. Like I've seen myself have really shit months because I'm going through some bad shit or I've just, I'm stressed out with, you know, bills to pay debts and stuff to cover or, you know, just the, the kids are doing my nuts in or something like that. You know, if you, if you're not mentally right, then it's going to be hard to be, you know, on your game. So mm. psychology would definitely be the, the, the one, I know it sounds wrong. Like there's all this stuff you can learn on the, sh on the charts. There's all these different trading strategies, all these different indicators. There's so much to learn with trading, but if you don't have the right psychology and understanding and patience and discipline, you'll probably never be a good trader. Yeah, I agree. There's got to be structure to it hundred percent. Yeah. So now you were saying before that you've, you worked for about, you know, two years before you considered yourself a professional trader. It's it's good, I think, to keep it realistic for the all the newcomers that are coming on board now to say you're not going to learn this in two weeks and be making millions of dollars. That's not how this works. It does take time, and not just time to learn it. I mean, you've really got to invest the time to to soak it all in and practice it, right? Yeah. What do you reckon? Just because I know I'm going to get asked this question a thousand times, how long do you think it would take before I'm a professional trader? How long does it take before I can start? putting some money in and actually pulling some good profits out on a regular basis. Yeah, it's, it, it is a, probably the most common question. So I've always got to answer it, but it is a very broad question in, in the fact that there's like, the, there's so many people on this, this spectrum. Like it's really hard to pick it. I, I've seen guys come into our community. He's actually on tonight. I saw his name there. Mark Banks, this dude's a gun. He's only been here for, he's been in our community for like two or three months, I'd say maximum. And I watch him post stuff on, on his Facebook and he, he's posting up charts and stuff and wins and shit. I'm like, this dude's making like a thousand bucks a week on trading. He's been here for like three months. There's people who just get it and they just click. Um, you know, Mark's probably one of those people who has the right mindset to trade. He, he's happy to take risks, but he's probably, you know, strict and, and disciplined enough to, to make the right decisions and, and you know, not, not gamble. Um, so, you know, there's people who come in here and after three, six months, you know, you'd say, shit, this guy's going to be good. Like he, he might not be making millions of dollars, might not be ready to quit his job. Definitely wouldn't quit your job after trading for three, three months. But, um, you yeah, know, you can sort of tell that like, yeah, this guy's going to be good. He's going to be here for a while. But then we've got people in our community who have been with us for like 12 months and I still get messages often, you know, saying, oh man, I'm just not having much luck. You know, I've lost the last 10 trades in a row. Like, it happens like everyone's different, but I think that's a good thing though. If, even if you consider yourself experienced to still be asking questions is a good thing. Yeah. You've got to keep yeah, 
we, we always say like there's no there's no silly questions there's no like don't don't feel like oh i've been here for too long i should know that i don't ask questions like no fucking ask it man if you don't know it you don't know it like you got to ask those questions um but yeah look i guess to put to put a ballpark figure on it i would i'd i normally tell people like six to 12 months before you start clicking and start making money i wouldn't say it'd be life changing money so if we're talking about professional trading so when i think profession i think someone who actually makes a living off what they're doing so yeah. for me a professional trader is someone who can trade and make a full-time wage and you know essentially doesn't have a job you know, might have a side hustle or something but you don't have a nine to five you trade and make your money there so as a professional trader look i, I would say two to three years to get to that sort of stage um if you were trying to do that if you were trying to become a professional trader only because there's certain rules that we have in, um, in trading that's been around more so the traditional markets trading Forex and stocks and things like that. Yeah. And that is like your account size generally needs to be about three times your annual wage. So if you're, if you're earning now, say 60, 70 K a year, well then, you know, the rule is your balance, your trading balance should be three times that. So you should have about 180, $200,000 in your trading account and be trading with that. That's if you're applying um, specific um, rules like risk management and stuff. If you've got strict risk management plans where you're only risking 1% on your trades and things like that, it's a much slower process, but also a much safer process. So you may not be making those big gains every week and having those $40,000 weeks and stuff, but you, you'll never really have those big $40,000 week losses and shit as well. So it does take time. So a professional trader will trade with a big amount of money that take less, uh, you know, smaller risks or smaller percentage risks. So you, you know, you've got to stick to that rule of, of three times your account. So to get to three times your, uh, your annual salary takes time, takes two or three years. So you'd probably develop some good skills between six to 12 months and get good at trading and start making some money. But it could be two or three years before, before your trading account is at a size where you could probably say, I can give my job the flick and I can survive off this now because there's, there's months where you have downturns. So you might, and with trading, we, we try to extend it out as much as possible. If, if you go week to week, man, you'll, you'll do your absolute head in. It's hard to budget trading week to week because I, I have weeks where I'll have an open position and I won't close it for that whole week. So essentially for yeah. the week, I make nothing. Yeah. And then the next week you might close it and you'll bank seven grand. You'll be like, sweet, good, good week, $7,000. And then the next week you cop a $3,000 loss. Like how are you supposed to budget with that sort of income, yeah. you know? So we normally stretch it out to months. So we go like month to month basis and, and work on a, I guess you'd call it a wage like that. Cause you're going to have shit weeks. You're going to have good weeks. Um, so you stretch it out to about a month. And even then you're still going to have good months. You're still going to have flat months and you're going to have shit months. Yeah. So yeah, you know, it balances out. And then you start looking even further and going into the year. So you, you could have a couple of really shit uh, months, you can have a couple of really flat months. You can have a couple of really good months. And at the end of the year, you can still say, I had a really good year. Yeah. So The biggest thing is it takes time to learn. And yeah. I think that's where most people go wrong when they come into crypto, especially because they hear about it from their friends and they go, well, it's really volatile. I've got, you know, I know someone that knows someone that knows someone that made a million dollars because he, he bought, you know, Casher four years ago or whatever. Like, you know, it's, Everyone's got that, that person that has made some kind of money on it and they all get a little bit disillusioned that, you know, you're just going to get rich or that it's a get rich quick scheme and all that kind of stuff. Just touching on something that um, Stephen said in the chats. Um, I tried to get Stephen into crypto about three, four years ago now. And yeah. um, he's only just now coming on board and, and having a bit of a look and taking a bit more interest. So, uh, well, well the good thing time, is, guys, Stephen, that, that it takes time. The good thing is the markets are actually starting to get a little bit less silly now. <laughs> so if you had to come in 2017, you probably would have been one of those people who, like we just talked about, had those experienced those massive highs and then copped those massive lows. And you probably would have ran away like a lot of them did. Um, yeah, exactly. I think that was probably what, what made me come out the other end successful is you know, a lot of people who came in in 2017 and saw the massive highs and then plonked down and, and saw the massive lows scared a lot of people off. Plus, you know, there was a lot of scams and stuff back then as well, you know, BitConnect and USI tech and all that sort of shit. And so, I think that's now a big deterrent in, in oh, you know, 2020, 2020. When, when you talk yeah. to someone about crypto, they think of the 60 minutes program that was run and how, mm. you know, old people are getting scammed out of phone bills and shit like yeah. that. Like, 
it gave it, it gave really the, the it. it gave yeah. the industry a really bad name. So it is hard. Yeah, I, I talk to a lot of my old mates, and they say the same thing. I always get the same thing. You're still playing with them coins, man. And yeah, you still got that Bitcoin. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> man, I'm pretty going. good. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I get a little you're still time. still working nine to five, bro. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, that's awesome, and so. Now that we've sort of had a bit of a chat about you and, and the guys have got to know who you are, maybe they want to know a bit more about your secrets. So do you think maybe we can dive into it and show them some basic basic tricks and tips and a bit of trading yeah. ideas? Yeah, we can do that. So I'll just, um, I'll bring up some trading view charts and stuff now. Um, I'll just share my screen. Pay attention, everyone. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not going to go crazy. Um, showing you all sorts of stuff that will probably just go over your head. And, you know, for, for those of you who've never really paid much attention to charts and stuff, or have even never, I know there's probably a couple of people on here who've never even seen a candlestick chart before, you know, this sort of stuff would probably be um, a little bit over your head, but I'll just, I'll try and start with some basics. I know this, this, my charts get messy. I get it from my students all the time. Like we, we call this the scribble and it gets, gets bad, but, they know how to read it. <laughs> um, but um, maybe I should start with a really clean, clean chart. Oh, no, where were we? Crypto, BTC. All right, so this is, this is a basic candlestick chart. And this is how we determine where price might go. So if you think like, think of things like the stock market in, in traditional investing, right? A lot of people would just always buy it and then you hold it and hopefully the price goes up. And that's what most people think when they think trading or, or investing. Um, but when you get into the technical aspect, we can start to read what previous price action has done and that can help us determine what we think is going to happen next. And we can look at all different timeframes to sort of determine, you know, the, basically the time frame that that thing will happen next. So if we think looking at this chart, the price might go up and we're on the four hour time frame, then we might be able to predict the move that might happen in the next couple of days. So that'll make us, you know, help us make a, an educated decision on placing our money somewhere to potentially make profit. Uh, however, if we're looking on the daily or the weekly timeframes, which is essentially just zooming out a lot more, then we can sort of predict where we think the market might go within the next month or so. And again, that can help us determine where to put our money. Um, these, these candles, they, they technically represent a, a trading period. So on the four hour, so you can see up here on the four hour, um, each one of these candlesticks technically represent four hours of, of trading time. Um, I don't know if I, I probably shouldn't go into the real in depth, um, you know, how to read candlesticks and stuff like that. We'll just, just show you some really basic sort of stuff. Um, but virtually, you know, by looking at this, we can sort of see which way the price went and it can help us determine where we think it's going next. So if Maybe you don't use technical chart, just quickly. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. So if we just did a line chart, that's just going to convert all the candles into a straight line. So you can see here, the price went up, down, up, down, up, down. You know, if you weren't doing any technical analysis, what would you really base your decisions on whether or not it's a good time to buy or sell Bitcoin? Because people are saying it, people are saying buy Bitcoin so you could buy it and hopefully it goes up. But you know, when do you know when to sell? When everyone says sell Bitcoin, like there's, there's gotta be a reason that you make those decisions and we use technical analysis. To, to figure those sorts of things out. Um, for example, there's a really clear one here, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replay this a little bit. I'm gonna go back to about here. So um, do you reckon I should leave it on the line chart? I'll leave it on the line chart, just, just to not confuse with all the candlesticks. So we've seen the price of Bitcoin sort of come up right here, right? And it, we hit around the $12,000 mark, and then we got rejected and started to come down. So what this level here is now a level of resistance. So it's basically saying that the price of Bitcoin wanted to go up. People were happy to keep buying it and we were moving up, but we hit a specific level, whatever, for whatever reason it was that level, $12,040. And then the price rejected. So that means there was basically a big sell order there that um, stopped the price from going any higher. But now that we know there's a level there, we know that if price gets back there, there's a good chance it's going to do the exact same thing again. So what we would do is go, okay, if price gets back up to this area here somewhere, I'm going to put a sell in. Now there's, there's different ways you can trade the market. I, I leverage trade. So I short the market, which means you technically place a bet that the price is going to go down and you make money when the price goes down. It sounds stupid, but I make money when the price goes down. Um, but you know, traditional trading, you're buying something and hopefully it goes up. So you might buy here 
and hopefully the price comes up here and this might give you a good indication to sell if we get back to this point. Whereas I would possibly do the same, but at the same time, I would also sell here with the intentions of, of the price going down. Um, and that's, that's called a short. So if I just push play now, sort of see where the lines went, well, that's going a little bit too fast. I'll slow that down. Now it's too slow. Okay, so you can see here, we went back up, we hit that level of resistance and now we're starting to get back down. So that might be where I open up a short position and profit down. And, and right now I'm sitting in this short position. I'm actually at about 750% at the moment, which was pretty handy. Um, so the reason I said 750% is because I trade with leverage. So I essentially borrow money to place my positions. So this is basically on hundred X, which is borrowing a hundred times my money. So if you can imagine if I had a thousand dollars and I wanted to place a trade to short this mark and it moved 10%, well, I'd make 10% on my thousand dollars which is fine, make a hundred bucks. That's pretty cool. But I mean, you, you can't pay your rent with a hundred bucks. So I borrow money essentially on the platform and all does it for you. I still have my risk and stuff involved, but um, I borrow up to a hundred times my, my money. So I can still place a thousand dollars on this trade. However, the trade size is actually a hundred thousand dollars. So when the price moves 10%, I'm making 10% on a hundred thousand dollars. So instead of making a hundred bucks, I make 10,000 bucks or whatever it is. I, Pretty shit at math when I haven't had enough coffee. Um, but yeah, so that's why this position right now, I think it's about 700 and something percent. Um, I, I'm, my position wasn't open right at the top. It was actually down here somewhere. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm 100x my money here. So 100 times my money. So I'm sitting pretty happy there around 750%, I think it is. And just to be clear, margin trading, that's something that comes well and truly into your education. That's not something you just start doing straight away, everyone. Yeah, yeah, definitely not. So normally, you know, we like to sort of teach people to spot trade to begin with, which is just buying and selling. No leverage, no borrowing, no multiplication. Um, however, unfortunately, the only way to make money spot trading is if the price goes up. So, which is perfectly fine. There's generally a lot less risk involved. But the downside is you only make money when the price goes up. So that sort of takes you back to traditional stock investing. Um, and, you know, sometimes that doesn't work. And if the market turns around and starts going down or if we're in a bear market, which a bear market essentially means the entire market is just trending down. Well, it's a bit hard to make money spot trading when we're in a bear market. Um, but by leverage trading, we've got opportunity to trade all day, every day. And that's what you need as a professional trader. You need opportunity to, to be able to make money every day, no matter what the market's doing. 100%. So that's why we leverage trade. But again, it, it has more risk and it's something you would do once you've sort of developed skills. Um, so I'm, I'm basically a range trader, which means I just trade within specific ranges. I, I do do continuation trading as well. But what a, what a range trader does is sort of look for these sort of levels like this, right? So um, a level of resistance, a level of support. And, and I just keep swinging these channels like this. So essentially what that means is I'll open up a position here and then close it up here. And then I'll open up another position here and close it down here. And then I'll open up another position here and close it up here. And then I'll open another position here and close it down here. So I just swing these big channels. Now they can take a while. I've, I've, I'm in two positions right now that have been open for 110 days. So a little bit over three months. However, they're like 5,000% profit because they've gone so far. Um, so that's swing trading, generally hold positions for a long period of time. Day trading is generally just within a couple of days. So this, this would be swing trading, range trading, but you know, with a day traders mindset of only holding a position for a couple of days. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of my strategy. Everyone sort of builds different strategies. There's a lot of people use, um, breakout strategies, which is, you know, relying on a specific pattern to break. And then that'll give you the indication of where the price is going to go after that. Um, and we can do that just by real simple trend lines, right? So just drawing a trend line like this, what we can see is prices come down and bounce off, off this level numerous times, bounce, bounce, bounce. Every time we come down here, we bounce. So what if the, the likelihood of us coming and hitting that again, what would you assume is going to happen? Most likely bounce, right? So if the price comes up a little bit, comes back and hits here again, you would go, okay, here's our trend line. We're hitting on our trend line again probably a good chance we're going to go up again. So you'd take, take a position here with the intentions of 
you know, maybe selling at that resistance level again. Might seem a fairly insignificant trade, but you know, 4%, you know, if you've got it, you know, a couple of thousand dollars on it, it's still a pretty good trade. Um, and that's, that's continuation trading or um, uh, retracement trading sometimes. Uh, let me just show you, what else can we I show? I touched on something you said a second ago about range trading and how it can take a long time. One of the guys in the comments section did say that he didn't have a lot of time, Michael, um, to spend on the charts when you're running a business and raising a family and all that kind of stuff, which I, I totally get. But I just wanted to say as well that when you're trading, you know, daily candles, for example, you don't need to be looking at the charts every single day. You can chart something up and then and then go about the rest of your week and, and you know, look in on your trade every now and again as well. You don't have to be sitting there every single day mm. because like Donnie said, some of these trades take a long time to actually finish, to actually happen. Yeah. You, you've, you've got to understand, like I got into this trade here around 7,600 and it's taken, sorry, I got the wrong tool then. Um, you know, it's taken... 114 days to get there, 53% times 100x, you know, that's 5,300%. 5, that, but that's one position. So if you can, if you could, was that Michael, did you say, Dave? Yeah. Yeah, Michael, if you can imagine how much time I have actually put into this trade, I, I have managed it a few times. I've taken some profit and adjusted some stop losses and stuff. But if we just count the amount of time that's been involved to place this trade and then close this trade, all right, we're talking about half an hour's work. So for half an hour's work, I've potentially made 5,300% return on investment. So if you essentially had a hundred bucks on that, you would have made 5,300 bucks and that you'd spent half an hour of your time. It really doesn't take a lot of time. Now, it's a good subject that you brought that up because it seems like that at first. And when I first got into trading, it consumed my life and pretty much destroyed my business because I spent more time in the office trading than I did in the workshop spinning spanners like I should have been doing. Um, but yeah, it didn't have to be like that. And I realized that what I was doing was not good, like over trading, you know, letting it consume my life. I realized I had other things I should be doing. So I, I had to develop a strategy that would allow me to do those things and, and still be able to trade, which is why I started trading higher time frames. Um, you know, one of my mentors, Jay, sort of, you know, mentioned to me back then is to start trading high time frames and stop looking, stop looking on the four hour, stop looking on the one hour, stop looking on the 30 minutes, stop looking and at the charts five exactly times a day. You know, I was watching 15 minute charts when I first yeah. started. Oh, same yeah. man. You get so excited. Then 15, <laughs> 20 minute candles popping up. You're like, oh shit, it's moon. And you'd be trying to fucking adjust your shit. It's just, that's chaotic, man. It used to give me anxiety and, and like it really affected me mentally. So now I zoom out a lot, start looking at the daily and the weekly and I understand market cycles and the way it's sort of a little bit smoother. And yeah, you can, you don't have to spend so much time trading. The other really cool thing, Michael, is you can automate a lot of this stuff. So you don't have to physically be on the charts, right? If you've got a really good idea of what you think is going to happen, you can actually automate on the interface what your actions are. Um, so for ex just as an example, right? Let's just say in your head, you found... Um, you found a level of support here, right? And then you sort of told yourself that if we hit down here and break this level and, and retest here or something, you think we're going to come down here. So here's a short trade that you want to do. Um, now you can automate this whole process on the interface. So on, on so BitMEX or, or Binance Futures, whatever you're trading. <laughs> if that's what you think is going to happen, you can automate that whole thing. You can run what's called a buy stop here. Uh, sorry, a... Uh, yeah, sorry, a buy stop. Um, and essentially what happens is if you, you've got an order placed here, even though the price is above and the price is slowly coming down, you've got an order here that says, if we get to this price, open a position. You're not even at the computer, you're at work. You're changing the kid's nappy or you're cooking dinner with the missus or whatever. You don't have to be at the computer to do this. You, you, you took two and a half minutes to place this trade and then it does its own thing. So you place a buy stop here. When price comes here, bang, you're in the market with a short on, okay? You can also automate the point that as soon as that trade opens, bam, you've got a stop loss here. So now you're protected because if you're wrong on this trade and the trade starts to go up, because remember you've betted, you've basically placed a bet that we're going down. If the price starts to go up, it's gonna close your account or close your trade, cut your losses. You'll, make a, you'll take a hit, you'll lose some money, but you're not gonna keep, keep losing. You've made the wrong decision. It didn't go the way you want. You're out. 
So that's your protection. It's called a stop loss. Um, and then at the same time, once your entry is open, it can also place a take profit. You can play, place multiple take profits. You can even have this stop loss trail your entry. So in other words, let's just say this is your stop loss point. You get pulled into this market and the trade starts going to plan and you start making money. You can actually have this automatically, your stop loss automatically follow the price down. All right, just in case we don't get all the way to your take profit and then come all the way up and hit your stop loss. If your stop loss is trailing the price down, then what happens if we just fall short and then start to come back up, bam, you sell there. So you could pretty much, for, for a couple of minutes of actually programming it, now when I say program, I'm not talking about coding and you know, all this um, you know, you know, real hard to do stuff. It's not hard. There's literally tick boxes and you say, I want to take profit here. I want to put my stop loss here. And you know, it's a couple of pushes of a button and then bam, it's automated. You can go to work. You know, I, I take the boat out and go fishing and still make money on complete automation. So yeah, in saying it, it, you don't have enough time to trade, that's, that's bullshit, man. It, it doesn't take a lot of time to trade. Um, but you know, it, it is a little bit addictive. So I can guarantee you'll probably get addicted to it and spend a lot of time on the charts. But it doesn't have to be that way. You don't have a lot of time to trade high time frame, high, high time yeah. frames. Like it's... Yeah. Swing, swing the high time frames. Yeah. So. Um, I just saw a really good pattern here that I just thought I'd just point out, which was a really obvious one. However, I didn't play it as well as I should have. But um, when I was just talking before about different strategies, this is, this is just a, a, a textbook breakout strategy. So we've got here a bullish pennant. When we broke out of this bullish pennant, we've had a big price action there. So normally what we do is we call this a pole formation and you normally measure the distance of the run to the top of the flag like this. And then you sort of got to assume it's, it's a ballpark figure. Um, but you sort of assume that as we break out of that pennant, we should sort of move similar sort of um, impulse move from there. No, it wasn't quite the same, but that's, that's kind of just a real basic formation. It's called a, a pennant or bullish pennant. Which we can touch on chart patterns or something in another another video. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to do a couple more of these. So we'll, um, we'll get into a little bit more technical stuff. Yeah. I think uh, the, the biggest thing is putting in the effort to learn this sort of stuff properly. It's not just about, you know, I don't yeah. have the time to trade or it is a um, commitment it's addictive it is a commitment. or anything like that. It's just, you need to actually, you, you'll put in more time educating yourself and learning than you ever will actually trading because you keep learning constantly. Like yeah. I, I'm still learning stuff every, every week, you know, and I've yeah, been doing this for learning. I'm, I'm lucky to, to hang out with my mentors every day. So I'm always learning, you know, I, they've always got something for me, you know, and I, I don't realize I'm learning it, but they're always teaching me something. So yeah, surrounding yourself with the right people helps, but um, yeah, never, never stop learning with trading. I don't think there's anyone out there who just calls himself a trading professional and doesn't listen to anything anyone says. There's always mm -hmm. something to learn. Um, but yeah, um, the, the time thing, you know, time to trade, that's, that's a piss poor excuse time to learn. Yeah. It, it's, it's relevant in a sense. Um, you know, people are busy and learning to trade does take a level of commitment, but you've got to sort of ask yourself, like, do you ever want to get w away from where you are now? Because if you never take those steps, you'll never get there. If, if you just keep doing <laughs> if you actually, this is something that, that, um, you know, my good friend, Michael, told me as well um and i'll probably i'll probably screw this up even though i have to say it all the time um if you always do what you've always done you'll always have what you've always got so in other words what that's saying is if you just keep doing what you've always done which is your nine to five you wake up in the morning you get ready for work you go to work you do your job you come home you cook dinner you go to bed you know you go out on the weekend you drink piss with your mates if you do that if you never do anything different, you're always going to have whatever you've got now. So if what you've got now is a car on finance, you're renting and you're trying to save for something, but you're constantly spending it. You might go on a holiday once a year with your family. That's all you're ever going to have. All right. The system is designed to, to keep you that way. You know, like the, the economical wheel. Um, there's a, there's a really good video to watch on, on YouTube by Ray Dalio, multi-billionaire investor. Um, he's got a video on YouTube called how the economy works in 30 minutes. Watch that. That'll explain things and, and maybe open your mind a little bit and realize where you are in life. Section, Donnie? What was that, bro? Can you type that in the comment section so that people can um, copy and paste that? Yeah. 
Well, I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll, um, I'll just search it up in here. Um, hey, Dalio, how the economy works. It's never been easier to learn stuff. The how the economic machine works. I'll post that link in there. If you guys watch, it's a great movie. 30 minutes goes for, but it puts things black and white and it makes you go, bing, holy shit. I realized I'm a worker ant. Um, because that's essentially what you are. That's what you are bred to, um, to learn at school is just the basics. You're, you're, you're grown to go to school, get an education, most likely get a trade, maybe go to college and upskill, get yourself a good job, start a family, buy a house, hopefully pay your taxes, retire, live off your superannuation, die, rinse and repeat. That's pretty much what you were designed to do. Um, and that's essentially when you watch that video, you'll understand that you're a cog in the machine. The only way to change that is to do something different. Okay. So if you always done what you've always been told by your dad and, or your mum, you know, has always said, you know, great Australian dream, buy a piece of property and blah, blah, blah. What that does is put you in debt for the next 30 years, technically the rest of your life. You know, you probably don't get your first mortgage until you're 30. All right. You pay it off for the next 30 years. If you've done your job right. Um, you turn 60, you're getting pretty old. You might get to um, retire soon and enjoy the next five to 10 years of your life before you get put in a retirement home. There, there's not much to it. And if you do what everyone's always told you to do, which is pretty much that, then that's, that's all you're ever going to have. You won't get to have that extravagant life that, that you see other people have and you think, oh, how do I get, how do I get rich like them? Well, you got to do something different. You know, it could just be a side hustle. I'm, I'm big on side hustles. I've always got to have there's, there's got to be multiple streams of income. Don't just rely on your job for income because you'll, you'll never get ahead. That's just a, a trap. J-O-B, just over broke. It's to keep you trapped in the system to pay taxes, pay your bills, and eventually die. <laughs> Bit grim. Pretty grim, old man. And I think that's where a lot of people should start putting their mindset when they first start trading is more of a side hustle, something to help supplement your income, something to, to grow sort of on the side with, yeah, it doesn't, you, you don't have to come capital, into this. Not, not just a straight up, well, I'm a trader now, this is my new income and I'm going to be a billionaire. Yeah, it doesn't have to be like that at all. You don't, you don't have to get into trading to become a full-time trader. There's, there's a lot of guys in, in our group who want to trade to earn a little bit of extra money because they want to be able to take their, their missus on a holiday every couple of months or they're saving to buy a new car or a new boat or something like that. Just that extra little bit of side income helps them pay their car payments or pays the rent and then, all of a sudden they got a little bit extra money on the side to invest in something else like, or, or help pay their loan off quicker, help pay their mortgage off quicker. There's multiple reasons you don't have to trade full time to be a full time trader. You can just keep doing as a side hustle. If you love your job, don't quit your job. But, and you um, touched on it a little bit earlier as well, but just build your capital up. You know, mm. Trade slowly, build your capital so that eventually you will get to a point where those 1% trades are worth far more money. You don't need yeah. to be going... Yeah, gun yeah. from the word go. Well, one of my mentors, Jace, yeah, he 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 dwarfs me. Okay, so I, I do some pretty big trades. He does a lot smaller trades more often. But he he'll make 50, 60 grand a trade. And it, it absolutely dwarfs what I do. Um, but he's been trading for like 12 years and he's gotten that good at it. He's built his capital up, but he's playing with a large amount of money now. So when he places a trade, he's buying multi-million dollar contracts. You know, so when he makes a trade and he makes 6%, he, he, yeah, he'll quite easily make fifty, sixty thousand dollars 60000 Takes a while to get there. It does. And it starts off small as well. So, um, Did you just want to maybe run through a couple more examples of sort of how the market moves between support and resistance or something as well? Or Yeah, we can get into something got, else. Um, got another, what else can we have a look at? Um, I'll, I'll show, I'll share some stuff that I was doing on Monday's call. Um, so a, a lot of people come to me with, um, you know, oh, what do I buy? Yeah, this is going up. Can I buy this? Can I buy that? Yeah. Normally, normally when people come to me, start saying, I want to buy or like, oh, have you check this out, check this out. It's going really well. That normally means it's probably a good time to sell because all the, um, you know, all the late, late to the party guys are coming in to, to collect. Um, so this was one I did on Monday after everyone was telling me buy gold, buy gold. I'm like, man, I've been in gold for quite a while. I think it's now time to get out because you're telling me it's time to get in. So I've seen um, your gold trade. Yeah. 
I did this chart up on Monday. Um, so we've had a, so this is another breakout type strategy, but also following what's called market structure. Market structure is like one of the foundations to trading. Um, it's not a really hard thing to work out. It's not some super technical algorithmic strategy. It's literally just, man, you can just draw a line like we did before. You pull a line chart out and you find the higher highs and the higher lows and it tells you whether the market's trending up or the market's trending down. It's that simple. Um, but this is what's called a bear flag or, or sorry, a bearish pennant. So we've had a massive rise on gold. Now I play gold on the higher time frames. If you look on the higher time frames, we had a series of green candles, which is basically just saying, man, like this is really sharp price action for gold. Gold doesn't normally move this fast. No. So with that sharp movement on gold, there's bound to be a sell off because there's a lot of people who have been in gold for the last 12 months. In fact, I, I did a write up almost two years ago now. Um, where was it? I did a write up on gold two years ago. Um, where basically back down here, basically saying buy gold down here because the, the economy was very over leveraged. Um, we were at a state where people were about to start defaulting on properties and, you know, lending was getting out of control. The, the government debt, like, like, but heavily based on the US markets, but like, you know, the government debt was out of control. People are going to start defaulting on loans. This is like 2008 um, credit crisis all over again. Start, you know, when that happens and the, and the economy starts to crash, a lot of the wealthy people will hedge to a store of value like gold, silver, palladium and stuff like, you know, precious metals and things like that. Um, so I did a big write up saying sort of you know, back down here, which was, it was actually February, 2019. So it was back down here somewhere and notice the level of breakout, start loading up on gold. So I bought some physical gold back then, um, but I only started leverage trading gold on the smaller time frames, but buying gold ETFs, so the GDAX and stuff like that. Um, and we have moved since then. So obviously that was you know, nearly two years ago, but we've need, moved nearly 60%. So it took a while to get there, but that's still an incredible move. And we just broke all time high just recently as well. Um, so you can see a couple of the smaller time frame trades that I did on gold over the last couple of months, which was this long from here. <clears throat> Why is that not going in? All right, I'll try again. Um, this long position from here, and then I was going to take this trade, but I missed it. So this is this is another formation here, which is called an ascending triangle. So basically price actions hit a level of resistance and we're still hitting a level of resistance, but you can see the buyers are starting to come into the market and hold us at this resistance level. It's only a matter of time till that resistance level breaks and then we shoot up in price action again, which we did, but I missed the, I missed the trade. So I didn't, didn't actually trade this one. But however, that price action just sort of told me on the higher timeframes, there's a good chance we're going to pull back down now. Um, and then, yeah, we charted this up on Monday. We saw the, the change in market structure. So we started to have a bit of a pullback we had this lower high. So this is our high, our low, a lower high. Then, you know, that's our change in market structure. We're definitely going down from here. We had our break in our bearish pennant. So basically that um, support line there broke. Entry there, looking to take profit at nine, uh, 19.22, which I've already closed. However, we did dip down a little bit uh, more this, the, this afternoon. Uh, so I didn't catch that last, but I actually started loading up on ETFs again. Um, so... <coughs> Um, sold my position, uh, close, sorry, closed my short position and then started buying gold ETFs again. So technically physical gold. So an, an ETF or an exchange traded fund is, is like an index. So it's not, it's not actually buying physical gold. I'm buying stocks in a diverse range of gold companies, mining companies and stuff like that. But they, they generally track the same price action as gold. So Buying a buying the GDAX or a gold ETF is essentially just like buying the buying physical gold without having to you know go to the Perth Mint buy gold store it somewhere pay for storage fees or bury it in the backyard and all that sort of crap. So it's just a quick easy way to get access to gold uh, in a liquid market. You know, physical gold is not a very liquid market. Um, liquid meaning it's hard to buy and sell quickly. If I need my money tomorrow and I've got you know, a couple of ounces of gold. It's not that easy to just get rid of a couple of ounces of gold in your bank account. However, you know, with the trading exchanges we use, if I've got a couple of ounces of gold, ET, like a couple of ounces worth of gold ETFs, I can hit the sell button, transfer the money back to my bank account and go buy myself a, a new car. You know what I mean? So liquid markets is always, is the way to go. 
Um, I had a young guy that works for me and I, I made the mistake in a way. I, I told him to buy silver a little while ago. You know, didn't really think that I, I needed to explain how to do that. And he went and bought a big bar of silver. And then he's like, how do I sell it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's not that. E- I mean, like, there's there's obviously places you can do it, but it's not that easy. And a lot of the time, over the counter, or what we refer to as OTC with physical metals, um, they generally don't give you a very good rate either. You know, whereas you know on the markets, you know, for example, right now, gold sitting at nineteen thirty US. But if you had an ounce of gold and went to go sell it over the counter, they might only give you eighteen eighty or something like that. They're going to give you a shit of rate. Um, so there's always that with physical as well. So what's your next move on that trade then, Don? Tell everyone so I've, I've started to load back up on ETS because I, I do still feel gold is going to continue to go higher. Um, I think the s and is so overinflated. It's just had this great big dead cat bounce. And- uh, man, it, as soon as, as soon as, so, so my theory and hedging to the current market situation is the, the equity markets are so extended right now. It's ridiculous. So like, Money has been flowing into them that shouldn't be flowing into them. There's, there's companies that have actually gone broke and people are still buying their stocks. Like it's, it's absolutely fucking mayhem. Yeah. Um, why? I don't know, them. but it's not right. So there's a good chance once everyone sort of realizes what's going on and these markets start to pull back, that money flows somewhere. Okay. So the big money, you got to chase the big money. That's the, the institutional money that, that moves the market. You got to follow where that goes. And generally in these sorts of times, if we start heading to a recession where we're talking about companies going broke, people defaulting on their houses and you know, all that sort of stuff, all industries collapsing, um, you know, big industries like oil and things like that. You, how many tankers are sitting out on the ocean right now? Cause there's nowhere to put the fucking oil. Um, we're going to see a big collapse in the economy. You'll generally like, you got to think these guys with billions of dollars, if they left their billions of dollars where they are and then the, the economy collapse, their billions of dollars are going to turn into millions of dollars and billionaires don't like to become millionaires. I can guarantee that. Yeah. Um, so they'll be looking for places to put their money and in store of wealth. They want to be able to hedge into something that isn't going to lose value when the rest of the economy dies. So when the dollar's losing value and, you know, we have hyperinflation and things like that, which is you know, a little bit scary, but could possibly happen. You want to be, you want to have your, your assets into something that's going to retain its wealth, which is generally going to be well in the past, in previous recessions and depressions, it's, it's things like gold and silver or, or other, other commodities like the, there's hard and soft commodities. Um, you know, you've got gold, silver, oil, palladium, lithium, things like that, which are, you know, um, resourced or found mined, if you want to say it like that whereas soft commodities are grown. So things like you know, sugar and wheat and corn, we're always going to need that shit. So there's always going to be someone on the other end of the stick wanting to buy your corn, but we don't need an abundance of it and you can always grow more of it. Whereas gold, you can't grow more gold. There's a limited amount of gold and we don't even know how much is in there and you know, people are still trying to hunt the shit. So, and it has intrinsic value because it's used in you know, medical and computers and stuff like that. So it actually has a, a purpose. Um, mm-hmm. So that's going to be something that you you want to put your money into. So I'm and what all we're going to go for is Bitcoin, obviously. It, yeah, gold, gold uh, Bitcoin is obviously often referred to as as digital gold for, for very similar reasons. It has a finite value. It's never going to, you can't print more gold. Uh, you can't print more Bitcoin. You know, it's only there's only ever going to be uh, 21 million single Bitcoins. And there's technically less than that because God knows how much of it's been lost already. So hmm. yeah, that's why it's often referred to as digital gold. It has, it has the same fundamentals as gold, basically. Three mil, Thomas said, three million Bitcoin missing. So three million. I, I honestly thought million there'd million. be a lot more than that. I thought it'd be more too, actually. Yeah. Just like you got to think early days when people were spending, you know, 20,000 Bitcoin on a pizza. You can imagine there would have been some people who have lost some keys back then. <laughs> I know a guy that, that had millions of dollars worth of Bitcoin and his missus took it on a, on a um, computer drive to New Zealand and then, yeah, it's, it's just vanished all of a sudden. So, yeah. I wonder if Thomas has got anything to do with that. He's in New Zealand at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, with the, with the actual current price action on, um, on gold right now, it's a really good buyback, which is what I was looking for. I actually wanted to see it on 1922 because I thought that would be the floor. Actually, I, to be honest, I probably got that a bit wrong. 
I was probably should have been looking about there. Um, so I kind of wanted that to be the floor. And what I was actually looking for that would give me the confidence to jump back into ETFs was a strong buyback at that level. So I picked my levels a bit wrong um, for my buyback, which that's, that's okay. I'm fine with that. Like I said, gold is a long-term hedge for me. So I'm not interested in a, a short-term gain. And if it turns into a short-term loss, I'm okay with that as well because I'm, I'm planning on holding it for at least six to 12 months, which you know, technically they say for, for ETF trading and stuff like that, it's like three to seven years. You probably should hold on to a long-term investment. Um, but me playing the market and understanding how the market works, it'd be a lot less. My idea is like the next six to 12 to month, that's next six to 12 months is when shit's going to get real in the um, global economy, I believe. So I that's where I think I'm going to make the most money on gold in the next yep. six to 12 months. You know, there's some of the big wigs, um, you know, some of the, the big billionaire investors and stuff, they, they're calling like 20,000 gold, which is like ridiculous, but yeah, you know, they could just be talking it up, but shit, it'd be interesting to see gold go to 20,000 especially if um, Bitcoin you know, indexes it that well, we could see some 60,000 plus Bitcoin, which would be even better. <laughs> yeah, I agree. But yeah, that, that buyback strong. So I think we're going to hold um, somewhere around here and probably change market structure. So there's our new high. We might pull back. We might pull back to around this red line here and then hopefully start heading back up. And then I dare say we'll see another pretty quick run. Sweet, man. Well, maybe before we finish this off, do you want to have a quick look at Bitcoin for everyone? Or Yeah, sure. Go back to the four hour. So I will just sort of share with everyone sort of what I'm seeing at the moment on Bitcoin, which uh, I've been sort of playing with over the last couple of weeks, which which is just a range. So normally what we see on Bitcoin after we have that impulsive move, we get stuck again and you know, stuck between these two levels in a range. So I'm, I'm just currently trading this range, but I'm also waiting for the next breakout. Now I'm bullish on Bitcoin, similar reasons to, to gold. Um, but if we look at the higher time frame charts, there's a couple of levels that I was looking at that I wanted to see us break above. Now, if we go back to say trend lines, for example, just gonna draw a real basic one here. I don't normally draw my trend lines like this, but it's just to highlight a really clean example. This was a, a level that we've been stuck trying to break for, for a couple of years now. Um, and we broke above it recently and cleared a very important level here and another very important level about there. And we're actually sitting above it, closing on top. We've got another four days to go on this weekly close. Um, so when this candle closes, I'm hoping the next candle starts to go up. So I'd say another four days, we're going to sit in this range. Um, so another four days or so we'll probably sit here and then I wouldn't be surprised if that at the end of that four days, just as the weekly is about to close, I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing, um, you know, a squeeze up in here and then pop and off we go. That's kind of what I feel on Bitcoin at the moment. And then the next level, we're probably looking at this 14,000, which was our high from 2019. So something like that. Yeah. Boom. So yeah, about, about four to five days to play out. We'll, we'll break that resistance level and then we'll get another sharp impulsive move. Um, Bitcoin does move up fast. So when it gets going, when it, when it clears level of resistance, when there's like a clear breakout, it starts to move first. Bitcoin and crypto in general has a lot of FOMOers. So when it, when it has a clear break and it's going up, money just flows in and just shoots up. You'll, you'll get a couple of, you know, $1,000, $2,000 candle. You know, we'll move 10, 20% in um, like 10 minutes. You know, if you're leveraging that, you'll make 2,000% in like you know, an hour. It's, it's spastic. Um, really exciting. Um, the good thing is a lot of us traders who, who trade crypto have a lot of our wealth in Bitcoin. So when we move up 10% in Bitcoin, it gets pretty exciting because we see how entire accounts start to go, you know, even without trading it. So it's pretty cool. So, yeah. That's what I feel. Well, I think that's about us, man. It's eight o'clock now. So thanks again for jumping on tonight, man, and, and sharing your knowledge with these guys. And um, everyone, thanks for coming on onto the call. We are going to do this again next week. I think we, we're going to do a three-part um, series, aren't we, Donnie? Yeah, yeah, we'll break up into three parts. Obviously, yeah, this was just a little bit of an introduction and, and just to, to give you guys a brief understanding of, of who I am and what I do. Um, yeah. But yeah, we'll jump a little bit more into 
yeah, um, we'll, we'll go into some more technicals and and maybe even open it up to um, a bit of a Q and A if you guys are interested. Yeah. Um, Reese, where do I buy the GDAX? Um, I use a platform called Stake. I trade the New York Stock Exchange, so I, I use a, a platform called Stake. Um, but you can buy GDAX ETFs on uh, the ASX. Um, so I use uh, Comsec um, for ETFs and um, Self Wealth is another good uh, Australian broker, Aussie broker. Uh, Craig just mentioned it there, Comsec and Self Wealth, uh, which is good for more so day trading. So Comsec is a really good platform and they've got a good list of assets. However, their trading fees are like $25 in and out. Um, whereas Self Wealth is about $7.50, I think. Um, so if you're doing a lot more active trading or smaller amounts, then, um, you know, self wealth might be a bit better. You know, there's no point, you know, with, with, with ETF trading and stuff like that, you've got to buy a whole lot sizes. So you can't just buy a hundred bucks worth of something. You've got to buy like two shares. Um, and that might cost 160 bucks or something like that. So, and if you, if you're on say Comsec and you're doing trades of, you know, 100, 200 bucks and you're paying a $25 fee to buy it and another $25 fee to sell it. Well, there's 50 bucks. Now, if yeah. you put $100 on the trade, you've essentially got to make a $50, a 50% return to actually make money on the trade. So Comsec's not very good for trading unless you have big lot sizes and the $25 fee seems insignificant. Um, South Wealth on the other, other hand with the smaller trading fees makes it a little bit more um, appealing for day trading, getting in and out. But, um, you know, if you're buying the GDAX, you're probably not looking at day trading it because, you know, the, you, you're going to see two, three, four percent moves over a week, five percent moves over a week and be happy with that. There's no point day trading for five percent. If you could leverage trade it, different story because you could, you know, make 30, 40, 100 percent on it. But yeah. And guys, if you have any questions as well, or if you see me in the, the Facebook group or whatever, um, my inbox is always open. So if you want to shoot me a message, ask me any questions, then by all means, I'm, I'm happy to have a chat. I get it every single day. Every day I get numerous people messaging me and um, asking some advice and tips and I'm always happy to help out. So if you do need to send me a message, then just do so. And Donnie's are bad as well. So I'm sure you won't mind getting hassled a little bit. Yeah, I'm used to it now. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Oh, all right, Donnie, thanks again, man. And thanks everyone. Right. For your call. Yep, too easy, man. See you next week. There you go. Bye.